you. And Lord, I first say thank you. Thank you so much for such a great people. Thank you for this family, Lord, that you've ordained here in Baker, Louisiana. I thank you for all of our leadership, Father. Lord, I lift them up before you and I ask for your favor and your blessing to be upon them all the days of their life, Father God. I pray, Lord, that you would cause prosperity, good health, strength, wisdom. Lord, your blessing to be upon all your people in this place today. And all of those all across the world that are with us, Lord, by live stream. God, we're so grateful. Lord, we welcome you into this place this morning. And we ask you, Father God, to have your way in this place, God. I pray, Lord, for every person that's hurting, Lord, those that are heavy, those that are walking through things, God, that your grace will come into their life, your mercy, your strength, God, will come into their hearts and lives today. Lord, I pray for those that are facing uh, things, Lord, in the valley of decision that you will speak to their heart concerning situations and circumstances concerning trials and tribulations, Father. I pray, Father, that you would give God direction to your people today. Lord, as we go forward for you in your glory, we pray, God, that you would meet with us, that you'd fill our, fill our hearts, God, with your glory and with your power, God. Fill us up, Lord, with the power of the Holy Spirit, God, and make us everything that you've designed in engineered and called and created us to be and for it all God we give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise oh great God we say that you are God and there is none beside you we give you glory in this place are you ready come on church help me give him glory in this house here we go And I feel a rumbling down under my feet. Power to wake the dead from out of their sleep. And I hear a rustling in the top of the tree. So stand like a warrior. Fall to your knees Come rule us, O Savior With your staff and your rod Come shatter this atmosphere With the glory of God
Let's, let's get some leaders up here. We'll pray for you this morning. Any special requests that you have today in prayer, you just get out of your seat and meet with one of these leaders. They'll touch and agree and pray for you. Well, I think it's time to be alone. Away from everything that's deep. I need some quiet time alone If I told you that you're beautiful, Lord And that I'm trying to be more like you I am ready to be out on the water by myself. Well, I'll do anything that you desire to be with you. Come to
I think it's time to be alone with you Away from everything that's dear to me I mean, you appreciate the Lord in this place this morning. Is He good or what? Let's, uh, let's pray over the world. Um, Brother Ricky... Brother Ricky, let's pray over the world. You know, as we get ready to pray, would you just get up out of your seat and find a, a state or a nation or a group that you can uh, connect with? And um, as we start to pray over the world, let's just turn this place into a prayer center. Let's turn our church into a prayer center. So just get out of your seat all over this place. If you feel like walking around, you can walk. Pray for your family. Pray for God to move in the nations uh, in, in the United States. And uh, I'm going to send uh, Ricky Dory. I'm going to ask Ricky Dory. If you'll just go over to the world over there. And uh, here's what we're doing. We're just turning this church into a prayer center right now. So it's all about praying to God the Father and asking Him to move in our lives, asking Him to move in the nations, asking Him to move in our families, asking Him to move in this city and in this region, Baton Rouge surrounding area. So, um, Brother Ricky Dory, if you'll start leading us in a world prayer. Yes, Father God, we just come to you in the name of Jesus, Father. We love you, we trust you, and we praise you, Father. Lord, your word says that for you so loved the world that you gave your only begotten Son, that, Lord, whosoever should believe in him, Lord, shall not perish but have everlasting life. Lord, we lift up this world to you, Father. Lord, we declare it and we decree, Father, that, Lord, that we're going to reach the world for their good and for your glory, Lord. Lord, we pray for any missionary, Father, that's in the surrounding areas, Lord, in your world, God, that, Lord, you would strengthen, you would encourage, you would build them up, Father, and that, God, you would continue, Lord, to spread your word, Father, and that, Lord, as they receive, Lord, your word, that, God, it would change the hearts and the lives of many, Father, that would come to know you. Lord, we trust, Lord, that even now, Lord, as we pray, any two things is touching in agreement, and we ask of you that, Lord, it shall be done according to your will, God. Lord, we pray for Australia, God. We pray for North uh, and, and in North America and South America, Father. Lord, we lift up Africa, Saudi Arabia. God, you know the need there. Lord, you know the people you have there working for your kingdom, God. Lord, we pray you're anointing upon them. We ask, God, that we would see a mighty move, Lord, not by might, not by power, by your spirit, Lord, that would go forth and touch the nations, Father. For Lord, for your glory, Lord, we just love you. We praise you. We give you the glory and the honor. Now, Lord, we release you right now by faith, and we say, Father, have your will and your way, God, that you would minister to, Lord, all the hurting, all the dying, Lord, all the sick, Father, all those that don't know you, Lord, that you would draw them, Father. Lord, we pray for our government, Lord. Lord, we lift them up right now. We pray, God, that you would touch their hearts, God. And, Lord, let them see that, Lord, the government has been lifted off of the shoulders of Jesus. And, Lord, that it needs to be put back on his shoulders, God. That, Lord, they would become God-fearing men and women, God. That, Lord, they would lead this nation, Father, this country, Lord. Lord, into a place, Father, that's greater than we could ever imagine, Lord. That, Lord, in the last days, Lord, that, Father, you would send your spirit, Father, and reveal, Father, what it is your heart is concerning your people, Lord. We give you the glory and the honor. We love you. We trust you. And we praise you. And we say, Lord, have your will and your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hey, just keep, yes, com keep continuing to pray right now. Yeah. Father, we just lift up our families here at Miracle Place Church, all of our loved ones, God. God, we ask you for those that don't know you, Lord, that, Lord, your word says that no man can come unto the Father unless he first be drawn. So, Lord, we release through your authority, your power, to draw our families out of darkness and into your marvelous light. God, we ask you, Lord, that you will save our families, that you'll move mightily in our families, God. Supernaturally touch our families' hearts and lives. 
draw them out of darkness. We pray for those that are in bondage, God, those that are addicted, those that are affected, God, that you will supernaturally move in our families in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. God, we thank you that you're supernaturally moving right now upon our families in this church, oh great God. Lord, we lift them up before you and we ask you to supernaturally move, God. We ask you to meet every need of all of our people, God. Those that are struggling financially, Lord, we ask you to supernaturally move in their finances, God. We pray for raises and bonuses and increases, oh great God. Lord, we call upon the covenant that we have with you, the favor, Lord. That, that you placed on our lives, God. We ask you to supernaturally move in all of our households, in all of our lives, God. We give you glory. We pray for those that are sick, God, those that are fighting disease, God, that you will move mightily into their bodies. We release the healing virtue power of Jesus Christ to move in every body. We command every sickness in the name of Jesus, every disease to go. We release the power of God through confession and through speaking God's kingdom into existence. Now, Lord, we speak your kingdom now. We release your kingdom to move in your people's lives. Every need that they have, God, supernaturally move in their lives right now in the name of Jesus. 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 I just feel impressed in my heart right now to teach you something that's very powerful concerning Christians and the covenant that we have in God's kingdom. How many of you know it's all about God's kingdom? All right, so everybody agrees that it's about God's kingdom. So then how do we release the power of God's kingdom? You know how we rule over the kingdom? We speak. We release God's kingdom by speaking. Jesus taught us, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Talking about God's kingdom. But Jesus taught us, if you needed to cast demons out, he spoke to the demons, said, come out in the name of Jesus. And the kingdom of God was manifest. When the disciples were scared for their lives and the boat was rocking and reeling, baby, and the winds of life were blowing, the elements of life, and they turned to the Lord and they said, Lord, care if not thou that we die in this storm? And Jesus, oh, you of little faith. And he got up and he spoke God's kingdom. He said, peace, be still. And the winds ceased. The storm ceased. Because thy kingdom come, thy will be done. We are kingdom children. We are covenant people. We are kingdom people. We release God's kingdom by speaking. Adam was commanded to name all the animals on the earth. How did he name them? He spoke their name. Listen, the lion and the lamb. They Listen, the lion didn't know if he was supposed to be uh, hanging out with the lamb or eating for lunch until he got his name. Listen, guys. We have got to stop speaking stupid stuff. We gotta stop talking negative. We are killing the kingdom. We have got to understand who am I? You gotta understand who's who. I've been thinking about a sermon. Who's who?
Man, I'm telling you, there's some things stirring in my heart. Because the treasure of God is hidden in earthly vessels. And we are the treasure. Matthew chapter 13 said, though, when you buy a field that has a treasure in it, you got to buy the whole thing, baby. That means you got to accept people for all that they are. You got to accept the dirt that's got to be mined in their life to get to the church, to the treasure. You got to love them where they're at. You got to reach them where they're at. You want the glory of God? Yes or no? Wait, do you really want the glory of God? Can I tell you what the glory of God is? You know what the glory of God is? And yeah, I know that we've all pictured the, the glory cloud of God that's in the sanctuary and the priest couldn't stand to minister or they would get slain because of the glory of God. And I understand that that's a form of glory. But he said, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us, watch this, a far more an exceeding eternal, watch this, weight of glory can I tell you that God every time you go through something hard in your life every time that you face something serious or hard in your life that you go to another level from glory to glory listen glory comes when you go through something in your life the more you go through the more glory you get in your life And you got to buy the whole field, baby. You got to buy me. If you want the treasure that I got, you got to buy the whole package, baby. You got to buy the field. You got to love people for who they are. You got to speak. God's kingdom, you got to be positive. You got to say what God says. If you're going to move God's kingdom, you got to understand who you are and what in the world you are doing. You can't get caught up with backbiting and judgment, schism and division whispering behind people's back all of that is a work of darkness listen we are kingdom people we're children of light and yeah listen me. i got some great news for you when you point your finger there are three pointing back at you baby do you understand that and i got some more news for you there's none righteous no not one so who in the world are you you are right every one of you are off now what gives you the right to judge someone else when you yourself are nothing when you point your finger this three point back at you who in the world what arrogance my god because we have this treasure in earthly vessels the problem is, is they're earthly vessels. And this ain't no dirt better than no other dirt. I don't care what color. You be brown, white, black dirt, whatever dirt you are, babe. Ain't nobody better than nobody else. And when I hear criticism, backbiting, and whispering, I mark you as immature. I mark you as someone that really doesn't really have the revelation of what God's doing. Because there's none righteous, no, not one, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And so for me to ever point my finger at judge, 
rather than speaking life, instead of, uh, instead of siding with the devil and speaking a curse on them, how about releasing God's kingdom on them so that they can actually become all that God has called and created them? How about getting on God's team rather than the devil? How about going AWOL from the devil's army and joining God's army and really affecting change, really being kingdom people? Really loving people. This stuff's been burning in my spirit. Because he said you'll go from glory to glory. But as I traveled this week, I thought about that word. And as I was in the hotel room by myself, God spoke to my heart. He says, glory. You've always thought it like a glory cloud or some some. Something like some kind of outward show or something. But he says, the more that my people go through and the more that my people fight the good fight of faith and stand, the more weight of eternal glory that comes upon their life. Somebody said, oh, I want the glory of God. Do you really? Have you thought about the price? Have you thought about what you may have to go through? Oh, you want a pastor, do you? Especially a crazy folk like us. And you really want to go against tradition and orthodox church? You really want a place where you can be sincere and really get up, share your heart, and really not hold anything back, not put on any kind of religious facade, come on now, or any kind of mask or act. You just want God, and you're willing to say what needs to be said even at the expense of hurting someone's feelings. You want a service that acts crazy? They just get up in the middle of service and pray. They walk around. Man, the pastor, he said, yeah, have you heard about the pastor? Yeah, that, that pastor. Let me tell you something, baby. You better never walk with someone that don't limp because if they don't limp, they will kick your legs out from under you. You better yoke up with somebody that's been through a little something, something, that's got a little fortitude in their spirit that they can fight the good fight and stand. You yoke up with somebody that is a novice, somebody that's inexperienced. First time the devil shakes your tree. Come on now, baby. I'm telling you, so they're going to turn on you. Come on up. <laughs> Come on, give the Lord a great big hand clap today. Is he done? <laughs> I love you, Bishop. Thanks for the fire. Sit down. <laughs> Land, we just give God glory in this house, huh? Y'all may be seated. I was at Home Depot the other day, and, and they, had, um, they had this lady walking through the parking lot, and her shirt said, I stay turned up. And I said, hey, can I take a picture of you? I love that. And she said, yeah, sure. So she rocked a pose for me, and I, I thought, turn down for what, man? You better stay turned up, right? Oh, I just wish somebody else loved God up in this house with me. Shoot, up here all by myself, me and Pastor. What? <laughs> I know y'all still meditating and pondering, right? Man, it is so great to see everybody this morning. Everybody had a good weekend? All right, all right. Awesome, awesome. Uh, we have any visitors in the house this morning? If you would just raise your hand, keep it up for me. Where are you from? All right, wonderful. I had somebody back here. Please hold it up for me. You got to keep it up. Yes, where are you from? Clinton? Clinton. Clinton. All right, anywhere else? I'm looking, I'm going over here. Yes, where's everybody from? Kansas City, Missouri, in Texas. All right. All right. Where are you from, baby? Oklahoma? All right. Keep your hand up. Well, we're representing the, the, the map today. Where are you from? 
Brooklyn, Michigan. We're going to let the Yanks invade her? I get I'm loving you. Do people up north love Jesus? <laughs> She's, I assume. <laughs> yes, where are you from? South Dakota. That's where our brother Rick was born. Rapid City. Yes. Tennessee. All right. Yes. Wolville. That's right. You got to know someone know where Wolville is. What's that? Arkansas. I mean, I mean, if we just get a few more people, we might be able to cover the whole map. Yes. Kansas City. <laughs> Kansas City, Kansas, Kansas City, Missouri. <laughs> I was just trying to see if we was hitting both sides of the line. Yes. Good morning. Where are you from? Baton Rouge. So wonderful to have you this morning. Let's give our visitors a hand clap. After service, we have a welcome center to my right. We'd love to invite you in there for a moment to have a chip and a cold drink, talk to you for just a sec, give you a little information about ourselves, hear a little bit about you. You get to meet Bishop and talk to him for a minute, and then we'll let you go and hit the Piccadilly line. Amen? Probably at the restaurant, the things will have died down by then, and you'll be able to get right in and get your seat. Y'all, man, are y'all awake this morning? I didn't need all that. <laughs> all right. All right, you know what? I think there's just that eternal weight of glory that's rest resting on everybody this morning, right? I had to turn up, tell them turn the heat off so that we wouldn't be all, you know how when you get real hot, you're like just, just stuck there like that? Well, look, we got some exciting things this morning. Uh, first, they're handing you guys a card. If you wouldn't mind putting your information down there and put your email address if you have one. That's how we stay in contact and let you know what's going on in the house. Also, even if you're not from this area, if you put that on there, we will send out a daily devotion to you every day. And just a little touch of the Word of God just to get your day started. Amen? All right, so we all need to kind of get in the Word every day just to feed our spirits a little bit because whoever you feed the most, that's the dog that's going to win. Amen? All right. Well, we got something exciting this morning. We had a contest going. Everybody remember the contest for the Hallelujah Night? Yeah, we had two pastors up here that were trying to raise candy. I hate to tell you, I am so ashamed that neither one of them won. Come on, roll that thing out. So they're both getting a pie in the face. That's right. We had Pastor Anthony. Pastor Anthony was ripping off Mike's candy and selling it on the black market. So he got taken down, arrested by the sheriff. And then we had, we had uh, Mike. Mike went over and, where y'all going? That's good Where enough. you going? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Look at the glory. They're scaring Look. me, man. Every time I move, they keep coming, you know. <laughs> I'm trying to get out of y'all's way. So anyway, and then Mike, I found out he went and got some from the food bank. So what's up with that? Ain't neither one of them won nothing. So I can't commend either one of them. We're not going to do that contest no more. It brings out our flesh too bad. Amen? Lying and cheating and getting arrested. and Y'all get on over here. Give me my pie. Y'all ready? Right, I'm, I'm fixing right, to hook them up. Her mic, hold her mic for her. Oh, my God. Oh, this is some nasty-looking stuff, sister. too. Where's y'all suit? What, what's, what's that? Where's the tie? What is it? <laughs> it's kind of nasty-looking. I mean, it, it's bubbly-looking like... Oh, come on, Mike. We're going to get you first because you're young. Here we go. Y'all ready? Here we go. Oh, my... How's that working for you? Look, I'm going to teach y'all how y'all better do right next time here. Come on over here. Oh, my God. I'm the messenger of God this morning. Come I bear on, not be, my be, sword in vain. Be, easy does it. Oh, oh chocolate. Chocolate. Whoa. All right. You got some crust on the back of your head? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to take a minute and clean up. Y'all watch NPC 77 News. We'll be right back.
we'll be celebrating Veterans Day Sunday, November 9th here at Miracle Place Church. Please bring any photos, uniforms, or any other memorabilia that you may have. Thank you. Stay connected by visiting MiraclePlaceChurch.org. And at this time, we'd ask that you'd silence all cell phones, bring your children to their age-appropriate location, and prepare your heart for Bishop's message. All right, all right, all right. Man, I still got stuff on me because they flicked the lights. I know, all right? Uh-oh. <laughs> Somebody call the ambulance. <laughs> All right, we're going to be the taking over. The ambulance. The ambulance, that's right. Um, that's when you whine too much. we got to have them come pick you up, take care of your little bobos, right? <laughs> you tell we we're real sympathetic a lot around here, amen? <laughs> All right, we're going to be taking up our tithes and offerings. This month's, uh, uh, we're, what we're doing is, is, do I hear music in my head? No, we all have it, right? Okay, what we're our focus this month is for Thanksgiving dinners because we have folks among us that that don't have enough to to get a decent meal. Amen. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to sign up for families and that sort of thing. So if you know a family or if you are a family in this house, we want to go ahead and get your name, and we're going to fulfill as many as we can. Amen. Yeah. I'd appreciate it if you can read the scripture. If you'll read it with me, it's Matthew twenty-five. 34 through 40. You guys ready? On three. One, two, three. Then I, the king, shall say to those at my right, come blessed of my father into the kingdom prepared for you from the founding of the world. For I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me water. I was a stranger and you invited me into your homes. Naked, and you clothed me, sick, and in prison, and you visited me. Then these righteous ones will reply, Sir, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you anything to drink, or a stranger and help you, or naked and clothe you? When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? And I, the king, will tell them, when you did it to these, my brothers, you were doing it to me. Father, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, you said the poor we would have with us always, Lord. That is our responsibility to care for those who are um, not able to care for themselves, Lord Jesus. And Father, we're just asking you right now, Father, that you would give us a, a wisdom about an amount to give, Lord Jesus, toward these boxes. Father, we ask, Father God, that you would... Touch each and every heart in here, each and every life. Father, first of all, we want to give you all the glory and honor and praise. Thanking you, Father God, that we woke up this day clothed in our right mind. Thanking you that we are able to be in your house, worshiping you and loving you and being with our brothers and sisters, feeling the power of your presence. And Father, we ask, Father God, I ask you right now, I speak a blessing over your people. I speak the favor of God over your people. And I ask you, Father God, that when they leave here this day, they will feel 10 foot tall and bulletproof. I ask you to strengthen and encourage them, Father, and meet every need that they have. Lord, for all of the tithers, Lord, all the sowers and givers, Lord, I ask, Father, that you would multiply it back unto them, Lord God. I pray that you would meet every need that they have right now. Let the power of your presence just rain down upon them in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, when you come forward, greet our visitors this morning. Love on them and tell them you're glad they're here. Amen. Hey guys, so glad to see you today. We love you so much. I always take a couple of minutes just to personally greet you from all across the world. We're so thankful and so grateful that you're with us in our service today. We speak God's favor and God's blessing upon you and your family. Father, I release your kingdom, your favor and your glory into all of our people all across the world. God, I pray that you'll cause increase, Lord. Favor, Father God. Healing, God, to be manifested. Prosperity, Father God, in all of their hearts and all of their lives, Father. Take care of all of our people, Father God, from all across the world. 
We love them, Lord, and we honor them in the mighty name of Jesus. Hey, thanks so much for being with us. We release the power of God's kingdom in your life as we speak to your life, asking God to release his blessing in your hearts and lives. Have a great day. Have a great service uh, with us. Don't go anywhere. We've got a great, great service planned for you. Thanks. These hands are dirty. Give the Lord a great big shout in this place. Thank you. How about the Lord? Is he good? Now, how do you release God's kingdom again? You speak his kingdom, right? You speak his word, and it releases his kingdom. Hey, i got somebody very special today that I want us to pray for, and I want to introduce her. Uh, Miss Joyce Plummer. She's running for judge, and um, she's a friend of mine. And uh, Miss Joyce, I'm so glad that you're able to meet our people and be part of our service today. Would you take about two minutes and just greet us and uh, tell us what you're doing? Tell us w why you want to win this this judge seat. Let me just say this before I give you the mic. Um, this is a word for all politicians. You can never get offended at another politician for running because, uh, tell them to be quiet. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, you can never get offended at someone for running because they're running for the seat, not against you. So uh, lots of times I see politicians get offended, Miss Joyce, at other people, and they take it personal. But this ain't a personal thing. I ain't running against you. I'm running, against, I'm running for the seat, man. It's the office that I'm running for. So let me just try to help some politicians out there. Don't get offended. <laughs> it's part of what we do in our democracy. This is how we run our nation. And thank God this nation is a great nation. And um, is it perfect? Absolutely not. But I'll tell you what, it's a lot better than a lot of other systems that I see out there. So when you run, you don't get offended at your opponent and take it personal because they're simply running not against you, but for the seat. It's an office. Okay. To the bishop, I am so grateful my heart is filled this morning. I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He didn't become my Lord when I started this race. He has been my Lord for many decades now. In my 5.30 prayer time this morning, and I need to do this rather than talk about the seat right now, Bishop, because the word that came to me this morning in prayer was, beware of our words. They have power. They have presence. They have prophetic implications. There is no time. There is no space or geographical limitations to our words. And so we need to be aware, beware, be aware of what we speak at all times because he created us in his image and he ordained that we would speak as he spoke so that we could bring his kingdom into this earth realm. That was the message for my personal life this morning. Wow. So you know when I come in this place, I know there is no coincidence in God. Because Pastor Ricky told me 
last Thursday at the Municipal Center, if you come, we will pray for you. We don't make endorsements. There were no promises made to me. Yep. He simply said, we will love you, and my people and I will pray for you yes, if you come. Yes, we will. And I said to my group, that's where I'm going to be. <laughs> now, y'all do what you want to do. Go where you need to go. Joyce is going to get the prayer of the man of God and the people of God. And so I'm here this morning as a candidate for Judicial District Court. Thank you. The 19th JDC, and we give all the glory to God. Division G, I have come for your prayers and for those who are voters in East Baton Rouge Parish, particularly north of Blunt Road in the Baker, Zachary, Central, Pride, Port Hudson, Cheneyville, Monticello Park Forest, Villa Del Rey, Sherwood Forest. It's a, it's a vast section of the parish that votes for those five seats. And God has spoken because that's what I have said. I'm not running against anyone. I'm running for a seat because it was put in my heart 30 years ago when I was commissioned out of Bethany to go to law school at ORU. And I've been on a journey. But I'll leave you with this. First Peter 5.10 says, after you have suffered a while. I mean, everything the man of God was saying this morning was resonating in my spirit. After you have suffered a while, God himself will restore, he will confirm, he will strengthen, and he will establish you. And these past 30 years since I left and I have come back and I've gone away and I've come back and I have worked and I have worked and I have suffered in preparation for this day. And I believe it's the Lord himself who has put it on my heart to run for this seat. And so I seek your prayers and your support. And if you're in the sections that I, the areas that I spoke about, I ask for your vote on November 4th. I am Joyce Plummer and my number is 68. And I thank you. <laughs> Is she precious or what? Y'all think she's saved? Yeah. Survey said? Yeah. Okay, all right. <laughs> she, I tell you what, if she's not saved, she's doing a good job faking it. <laughs> I don't think she is. I think she's saved. I think she loves God with all of her heart. And um, if she doesn't make judgeship, she can start preaching. <laughs> Come on, stretch forth your hands. We always pray for um, those that are seeking office and those that are in office. God, your word teaches us to pray for those that are in leadership, Lord, so that there would be peace uh, in, in the land. And so, God, we lift up Joyce Plummer before you, Father. We pray that your perfect will be done in her life, Father God. We thank you for such an extraordinary woman of God, Lord. And Lord, we at Miracle Place Church bless her and release your kingdom and your power into our, her heart and in her life. Guard her and protect her and watch after her. May your face shine upon her, Lord. Now bless her, Lord, with your mercy and your grace and your favor. We pray for Joyce Plummer now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, and everybody says, amen, amen and amen. Thank you so much, Miss Joyce. We love you. All right, um, if you got your Bibles, um, we're going to start with um, Mark chapter 5, but why don't we go right to our handout. We're doing six atmospheres. I'm glad to see uh, Miss Rosh, our teacher, coming up, too. How many of you like our teacher writing on the board? Is that good or what? <clears throat> Shoot. She follows up and does an absolute phenomenal job. She's actually got a gift to teach. Um, so what I want to do is, let's don't start with the scripture. Let's start with our handout today. I know I'm mixing our media people up up there. Um, because I want to look at the good father. Now, you know we've been working uh, towards this final message, six atmospheres that the father creates. It's the Who Am I series. Um, we've talked about the abusive father last week, you remember? 
Um, we've talked about the performance father, King David. We've talked about the passive father, Eli, that didn't discipline his kids. Do y'all remember all of those messages? Um, and, you know, I was talking to Jeannie yesterday, and, and what we try to do is we talk about the message all week, and we kind of like uh, leave it in the oven so it keeps baking. All week, and so we. I try to think about these messages all week, just so that God can speak to my heart. Um, so she was saying, you know, Ricky, all the fathers in those atmospheres that they've created in their household, I've seen you operate in all of them. In other words, she said, I've seen you abusive, I've seen you performance, I've seen you passive. And, of course, I just said, well, th thank you so much for that, that compliment. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is, is I think that all of us, I mean, you know, this is not a perfect world, and you're not perfect. And we all make mistakes. Um, and, and I'm going to say this as we get going into the good father, that no matter who you are, no matter how you were raised, whether your daddy did you right or not, or whether you perceive that he didn't do right or not, it's still your responsibility to fulfill God's will and His purpose for your life, no matter what you've gone through in your life. Listen, you cannot make an excuse to say, the reason why I'm where I'm at is because my daddy did this to me, my mama did that to me, because listen, let me tell you something, you are still responsible as a free mortal agent for your own life. Therefore, it don't, and listen, God will take, God will take lemons and make lemonade out of it, baby. I'm telling you what, God will take something bad and turn it into something good listen he has that much power imagine that God will change species on you you'll be born one kind of species and then you'll become a God species come on now you'll have a sin nature and all of a sudden now you got a, 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 a Holy Ghost nature in you God changes your desires God will change your whole life the key is is we can't make excuses in our life and say the reason why I'm where I'm at because this this and this took place in my life no baby there's no excuse you are responsible for your life and no matter what if you're a limb and let God make lemonade out of you. If you've gone through something bad in your life, comfort those with the comfort that you've been comforted with by the Holy Ghost. Use your situation, your circumstance, your bad things that you've walked through for the good. Make a wrong a right. Make something negative positive in your life. It's up to you. I'm going to say it. Life is what you make it. So there's no excuse. Because all of us, somebody tell me, oh, well, I got the disease of alcoholism. I said, if it's, if it's a disease, it's the only one I've ever seen them tax. <laughs> got it? Alcoholism ain't no disease. You might call it a disease so you can uh, get, get the insurance to pay for it. Alcoholism is a sin. And until you repent, you're never going to get delivered. Because as long as you say it's a disease, now I can't help myself. I got a disease. <laughs> Woe is me. I'm just plagued with this disease. And then I got every time I buy a fifth, I have to pay taxes on it. <laughs> it's not saying that. What I'm trying to say is, is, man, you can't make an excuse. And I think I'm beat this horse to death. But you got to take responsibility. You got to take ownership for your own life. Listen, I could have said, oh, man, I was raised in an alcoholic family, and my mom and dad drank and drugged themselves to death. They even taught me how to do it. And I ended up in it, and then I ended up in jail. And woe is me. I'll never be anything in my life because that's the way I was my lot in life. That's the way I was raised. And so here I am. Woe is me. Poor me. Pity me. 
I can't help it. I was raised like that. <laughs> Man, shut up. Wake up. What is wrong with your mind? Man, this is America. Let somebody tell, oh, I can't find a job. <laughs> you can't. I, I don't have a vehicle. I can't get there. What? You lost your. <sighs> I'm a man. Man, you tell me something stupid like that, man, and I, I start hype of. <laughs> <laughs> it's the big one, Elizabeth. <laughs> Remember old Fred? <laughs> Fred Sanford. <laughs> Anytime he, all right, all right, so we got to get moving. Let's jump into this thing, um, and we got good timing, all glory to God. Um, so we're talking about the good father today. The good father provides for his children's physical needs, basic needs, home, uh, shelter, clothing, good food, all of it. But remember what I've said, a lot of fathers major on these physical things. They provide a good household, shelter, but they miss the most important ingredient that their children have to have. And what is that? That's the father. Meaning that a father's got to give himself to his kids. And what it does is when a father's spirit connects with his children's spirit, it creates comfort, it creates safety, it brings stability and security in their life. If a child is raised without security, stability, safety, comfort in their spirit, they grow up spiritually deformed. So a good father can provide all the external things, but the main ingredient is, is a daddy's got to give himself to his kids, and his kids and daddy got to become one. Their spirit connected with each other, and then that creates the fulfillment in the emotions and in the spirit of a child that causes him to grow up to be a whole person. And the problem with our society is, is nobody's whole. Everybody's broken. For the, for the most part, they're wounded, they're hurt. And then the world's constantly beating up on them some more, so it's injury upon injury. So what we got to do is we got to make sure that people grow up to be whole people. And if you don't get what you needed to get uh, in your family, you got to call on the name of Jesus and get a revelation of the cross where Jesus' affection and His love comes into your heart and in your life. And then Jesus heals you of your wounds. That's why by His stripes we are healed but you got to have a revelation of Jesus Christ on the cross and God's love and affection his care for you and that's what the cross communicates and speaks to us is is that God so loved the world that he gave his son Jesus Christ to pay the price for you so that you could be a whole person that's the revelation so their home is an emotionally safe environment. This is a good father. It's a stable place. It's a loving place. The father actually spends time with his kids. If you want to win your kids, it's T-I-M-E. So you got to spend time with your children, meeting their needs, and then that brings security and it brings affirmation. You remember when Jesus was being water baptized? You remember by John? Am I the only one in? All right. All right, I got 2% that remember, that, that know the Bible. Um, and so uh, Jesus was being water baptized, right? And we heard a voice in the sky that said what? Wait, what is it, Pastor? This is what? This is my son whom I'm well pleased with. Hear ye him. Okay. So what was God the Father doing? He was affirming Jesus Christ. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Hear ye him. And so what God the Father was doing, what was he doing? He was actually affirming, bringing affirmation to his son Jesus Christ. So what do we do as fathers? We affirm our precious children. We make sure 
that they know that they are special, that we support them, that we love them, we believe in them, they can do anything that they want to do in life. One thing about my dad, even though he was um, a partier and he drank and, and smoked pot and things like that, but one thing that he did give me was love. And so he put a heart to love in my spirit. And a stranger was a friend that he had never yet met. My dad loved people. And so that carried over into my life to love people. And then I got saved and took it to a whole nother level. Are y'all out there? But, but my father gave me that impartation. He gave me that, that affirmation in my life that formed in my little spirit and developed me so that when I grew up, that was an asset that I received from my dad, even though he had some bad traits. Come on now, you got to eat the meat and leave the sticks. So in life, you're going to always have to spit the bones out. So it's just part of life for y'all out there. So if children are raised right, then what could go wrong? I'm going to look at it from a little negative standpoint. But let me make this uh, clear. we got to be good fathers. we got to raise our kids right. And, and we got to do everything that we can do to make sure that they have everything that they need to be all that God's called them to be. Now, once we do what we're supposed to do, they are responsible. Are y'all out there? Because I can't come live your life. You listen, I can't live your life for you, Sterling. I can't live your life for you, Zachary. But I have put some tools in the toolbox, and you are well able. You are ready for life. I've given you my heart. I've given you my life. Everything that I could possibly think to give you, I've done it. And I'm still doing it. But you got to walk it out, baby. It's up to you to live the life now. I put the tools in. Now you use the tools in the toolbox for the glory of God in your life. Give God a great big shout in this place. Give him glory. So something negative can happen even when we do everything right. Because again, it's up to the person as a free mortal agent to take responsibility and ownership for their life. And that goes without saying. So if too sheltered, they uh, may be unable to go... Uh, uh, to, to let go of uh, the stability of their parents. One thing I did as a parent, I gave my children independence under my uh, jurisdiction and my authority and allowed them to make some decisions on my own, on their own, even knowing that they were going to make some wrong decisions. But I wanted them to make those wrong decisions while they were still under my umbrella. They were still under my arm. And so I allowed them to grow. I allowed them to develop their own personalities and their own individualities so that they become independent and be dynamic people, knowing that they would still make some, that, that, that they would make mistakes. But I wanted them to make those mistakes where I could still cover them and reach them so that they would develop. Let me just tell you something. Everybody makes mistakes. So the thing is, is, is that mistakes come with the territory. Sin comes with the territory. It's all part of it. God uses all these things to develop us. So y'all out there. By the way, God ain't scared of no sin. The devil's judging you. In fact, next week I'm going to give you a chart on uh, the devil versus God. And their attributes and how they operate. You'll find out that God's chasing you and trying to rescue you. And the devil's trying to judge you, condemn you, and destroy you. You'll find that God is your friend. And then you'll find out what side you're on. <laughs> Some children may experience difficulty leaving and cleaving uh, from their parents because it was such a... Um, um, uh, it, was, it, was, it was a home where they were so connected and they were so secure that they were scared to let go. Some women may even compare their spouse with the unattainable characteristics of their father. By the way, the father has already made all the mistakes probably before she was born and figured it out. Are y'all out there? I mean, no, you wasn't born a father. You got to learn how to ride that bike. They may foster unrealistic expectations even um, of their father. Sometimes 
we have preconceived things in our mind that our father should have did this and he should have did that when it was unrealistic. Are you out there? And the devil has thrown you a curveball and twisted things to make it seem like you were abused, you were abandoned, you were hurt, you wouldn't cared for. But the real reason was, was the father did what was really best for you. And you just didn't understand it because of your immaturity. Are y'all out there? Solution, know that even a good father cannot prevent disappointment and hurtful situations in the lives of his children. you got to walk your own life out. you got to go through your own valleys. Uh, and it, by the way, it's the valley of the shadow. It's the shadow of death. Teach your children from a young age to be dependent on God. That's the key. you got to teach people that you're not God, but God is God. So i got to point my kids, not to me. Of course, I'm going to be there and do everything a father can do. But i got to point my kids towards God. And by the way, Jesus Christ will fix it. It don't matter what. We're going to look at it from the Scripture. The whole goat is to give your kids Jesus. You give your kids Jesus and they'll be all right. God will work out whatever situations that they have to face in their life. Teach your children from a young age to be dependent on God. Teach them that He is their, their source and He is their comfort. He is their wisdom. He is their love and He is their provision. Listen, all the time, even in this church, people that are young in the Lord look at me like I can meet all the needs in their physical lives. man. But I can't live your life for you. What I can do is pray for you. And, and release God's power in your life. And you got to trust God just like i got to trust God. i got to trust God to pay these light bills. Listen, during the hot months, our electric bill was ten to 12000 a month. I didn't want to tell you what I have to believe God for. You would probably fall out. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous, man. It, it costs $72,000 a month for me to get out of bed for this church. Are y'all out there? And some of y'all want to tip God, not tithe. So, all right, I, I, I'm not into that. I'm, I'm just going to. By the way, if you tip, you'll probably get that kind of level of blessing too. So, all right, here we go. Are y'all. Let me, let, let me show you how you tip God. Look, look at that. Wait a minute, I tell you what, I'm going to be generous today. I'm going to give him $2. There you go, God. All right. That'll take care of all the bills. God is good. And, and listen, I, I don't care about your money. I don't want your money, man. You, you, but you get out of anything what you put in. So what you sow is what you reap. And, and it, if God's dealing with your heart, it's time to go to another level. Start tithing, man. I'll make a deal with you. If you tithe for six months, you got to write your name on the envelope when you put it in. So some folks say, oh, I've been tithing all along. And I, I look at the cash. <laughs> How much did you make again that last year? All right, so somebody's lying. Um, but you put your name on the envelope, and if you tie for six months and you come and tell me it don't work, we will refund your money back to you, okay? So if there's a record, you tell me it don't work, we'll refund your money. All right, so here we go. We're going to jump into the Scripture now. Um, I had a lot, of, a lot of Scripture that's in my heart and in my life, and I'm, I'm thinking about the good father. I thought of a couple of good fathers. Y'all remember the, uh, the prodigal son's father? He was a good father, right? Did he do everything right? Basically, though, I mean, I mean, for what the Scripture says, he did do everything right. He was a good father. What happened to his kids? One of them took off and hung out in the pig pen, chasing wild women and all kinds of crazy things, and the other one was bitter in the field, right? Um, the crazy one ended up getting his heart right. Imagine that. And the oldest son is still, you never gave me no party. <laughs> son, I've, everything I have is yours. 
I've been working for you all these years and that no good younger brother took the inheritance and he squandered it buying women and alcohol. and part. Now he comes back and you celebrate him? And Jesus was actually talking to the Pharisees because he did three, three illustrations. He said there was a man that had a hundred sheep and one of them left. The good shepherd went and found the one sheep that was lost and brought him back. And the Pharisees, hmm, hmm. They still didn't get it. He said, oh, well, there was a woman that had ten coins and she lost one and tore the house up, swept the place. Finally, she found the coin and, and called her friends and they rejoiced and had a big party. And even heaven rejoices over one sinner that turns from sin to God. They have a big heavenly party. The angels start shouting and dancing and stuff. And then he said there was a man that had two sons. One of them as for his inheritance early, and he had a little wild streak in him. Y'all don't know anything about that. And he took his daddy's inheritance, and he went to far land, and he started ripping and running and partying and scheming and scamming, hooking and crooking. God's looking and booking, doing all the wild things of the world. He's ripping and running. And finally, he, he runs out of money. All of his friends, there was no more Budweiser in the refrigerator, and he had no more friends. Everybody left him when he ran out of money. Imagine that. And he found himself in a pig pen. You ain't never been in no pig pen. Oh, you don't want to hear me preach, but I tell you what, God's got a sermon. God got a sermon, baby. We can get it the easy way. Or we can, we can get it. God said, I don't care how you get it. it. God said, it don't really matter to me, man. You want to eat some hus? No problem. You want to see the world deceive you and, and, and forsake you so that you can learn that it ain't about the world, it's about me? No problem. You're going to get it, though, baby. You're going to get it. Thank you, God. You're so kind. And, Lord, you're so good. You're such a good uh, college professor that you'll give me a retake to the thousands. I can take the test. Oh, all right. I mean, I hear good teacher. It don't matter, man. You still got a mustache in third grade. We'll give you another test. You can take it again. <laughs> Still, still got a new new in your mouth with the mustache. <laughs> Are y'all alive in this place? So ultimately, the young man repents in the pig pen. He says, I know I'll, I'll ask my dad to forgive me. I'll ask God to forgive me in heaven, and I'll go home. Good choice, son. Good choice. Now you got your heart right. So he gets back home. The father greets him. He's been looking out the window every day watching for him. What would have happened if that good father wouldn't have been there for his son? That's just a thought. Thank God for the good father is what I'm trying to say. Thank God for the good father. Um, so that is the prodigal father. Now I want to talk just quick before we leave out of this place today about a, a father um, um, named Jairus. And he had Talitha, his daughter. And his daughter is, is um, on the deathbed. And Jairus, which is so wonderful. You know what? I think I'm just going to quote this for the sake of time. And Jairus um, was the synagogue leader. He was a pastor over the synagogue, the Jewish synagogue, which was a church. How many of you know that the Pharisees and the Sadducees were not real excited about Jesus' new ministry? And Jairus is connected with all of them. But can I just tell you that Jairus is a good father. Jairus is really willing to forsake his own reputation, to lay his own life down for his precious child. You know what a good father is? A good father is one that will lay his life down for his children. Is one that will set his 
agenda to the side for the agenda of his precious children. The children that God graced him with, he's willing to lay his life down even as Jesus laid his life down for us. That's why Jesus is a good father too. And so here comes Jesus, and I'm going to just quote a little bit. We'll start in uh, Mark chapter 5. Jesus comes across the Sea of Galilee. When he steps on bank, he runs into a legion. Who remembers legion? Legion is full of devils. He's been cutting himself. He's been hanging out with the dead, the tombs. They chained him. They tried to lock him up, but he was so strong that when they put chains on him, he'd just break them. He was a wild man. He was full of demons. He was uh, away from society because he was out of control. And Jesus steps on the bank and and Legion sees him. Are y'all out there? The Dominican sees him, which is full of devils, legions of devils. And when, they, when Jesus gets there, the man immediately drops to his knees and starts to worship Jesus. How many of you know people can worship Jesus even with a devil in them? That's why I'm never surprised about crazy folk in church that look like some on the outside. Come on now. And I don't know what they are. But I tell you what, you'll know the tree by the fruit that it bears. If I keep my binoculars on you long enough, baby, you'll tell me who you are. I'll find out who you are. That's why I never worry about what I hear. I look and see what kind of fruit's on the doggone tree. That's, that's how Jesus said you judge. If you're going to make a judgment, become a fruit inspector. So, so now the the... The man that's full of demons is now worshiping Jesus, and they start crying out to him, Have you come to torment us before the time? And Jesus said, "Um, Who are you? And they said, We're legions. We're legion because we are many demons in him. Now, don't just send us into the dry place. How many of you know there's authority in the kingdom of God to cast out demons? Listen, if your child's fighting some kind of demonic force in their life, I'm telling you, Jesus is the answer. The kingdom of God is the answer. Your child's acting crazy. Huh? Jesus. And so... They said, look, bid us to go into the pigs. I don't even really know why Jesus gave the demons permission to possess pigs. But I tell you what, if your dog's acting crazy, come on. So don't tell me your dog can't be possessed. Or your cat. I've been watching that guy on TV. He's a cat trainer. (laughs) He's going to come in and fix your cat so he knows how to act right. So I don't even, all right, that's the world. So <laughs> my cat trainer. Praise the Lord. All right. So I hope he's spirit filled. He might need it. So <laughs> so now they said, look, bid us to go into the pigs. And Jesus said, go. And all the devils came out of the man and entered into the pigs. And then the pigs ran off into the sea where Jesus had just crossed the Sea of Galilee. And they all drowned it. Maybe I'd heard that they'd been sacrificing pigs there. And maybe Jesus sent a message to them that God wasn't too excited about their ministry. Are y'all out there? I've been studying that. Why in the world would Jesus bid the, the demons to go into the pigs? You know, what, what was the reasoning behind that? So some folks said that those guys were sacrificing pigs um, on altars and it was detesting to um, the kingdom of God. And that's why Jesus whooped up and gave the demons permission to go into the pigs. Here's my point. The man, immediately when Jesus decided to cross back over to the Sea of Galilee... The man that was delivered from the demons begged Jesus Christ, please let me go with you. Let me hang out with you. And Jesus said, no, go back into your city 
and tell everybody you see what good things the Lord has done for you. So become a witness for the glory of God. And then the, 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 the man that was full of demons, when he started witnessing, a whole town came to the Lord and said, My God, listen, how many of you know that this thing that you're going through in your life might be for the glory of God? I'll never forget what the disciples said when the man was burned born blind. He said, did his uh, parents do some kind of sin? And the reason why they, uh, um, he's blind from birth is because of the sin of the parents. And Jesus said, no, he didn't. they didn't do any sin. But this sickness is unto the glory of God. Watch this, man. And Jesus released the healing virtue power into the blind man's eyes. And all of a sudden, the man was healed. He could now see. Are y'all out there? I was once blind, now I see. But Jesus said, but no, this sickness is to the glory of God. Listen, what are you going through in your life? What are you facing in your life? Why don't we make it the glory of God? Why don't we allow God to get the glory? Oh, but man, I got this, I'm that. Are y'all, do y'all got about four more minutes? Are, am I wearing y'all out? It's 1231 right now. Do I have permission? Four or five more minutes? Because a good father's got to connect his kids to Jesus that can cast the devil out of him. The next thing, when Jesus crossed back over the Sea of Galilee, um, immediately Jairus, which was the leader of the Jewish synagogue, met him and he said, uh, Master, my daughter is on the deathbed. She's fixing to die right now. Would you please come and lay hands on her? Listen, for him to actually be a leader in the Jewish community, a, a pastor of a church, and go seek Jesus Christ out. Let me tell you something. He forsaked his reputation. He forsook his career. He laid it all on the line. He was a good father. He laid his life down for his precious child. He didn't care what it cost. He was still going to go after Jesus because Jesus was the answer. And on the way, when they were going through the crowds, Jesus following Jairus. And Jairus is pulling him by the hand to his house. He runs into a woman with an issue of blood that had been bleeding for 12 years. She had given everything she had to doctors and she was none the better. And she said, if I could just but get a hoe to Jesus, if you get your children to get a hoe to Jesus, she said, if I could just touch the hem of... And she pressed through. And she got a hold of his garment and immediately Jesus felt virtue leave his body. I said, the Holy Ghost, the kingdom of God manifest and release. Shazam, the power of God. And she's healed. And Jesus turned around and said, I felt that. Who touched me? And his disciples said, Jesus, are you crazy? All these people are around who touched you. Everybody in the crowd touched you. He said, no one had faith. One believed. How many of you know you got to believe? How many of you believe? And Jesus said, no. Yeah, there's a bunch of people crowding me. But one, when she touched me, she had an expectation. She believed. And when she believed, something activated in the spiritual kingdom of God and released Shazam anointing power and glory that did something supernatural on the inside of her. And the woman immediately was ashamed and she bowed down. Listen, when the demons got, got around Jesus, they bowed down. When the woman with the issue of blood, she bowed down. First thing, Jairus, when she, Jairus came to Jesus, he bowed down too, babe. How many of you know? That you'll get what you're seeking when you start to bow. When you get out of yourself, I was reading, I had so much scripture in me today, I didn't even know what to talk about. 1 Samuel 15, when uh, Saul was thinking about Saul and God being a good father to Saul. Are y'all out there? And Saul, uh, the Bible says that Samuel, when he came to him and Saul uh, did not do the command of the Lord to kill and eradicate the Amalekites. 
By the way, the Amalekites still came against David later on, you remember? Because Saul didn't obey the command of God. Somebody said, man, that's mighty harsh that, that God told uh, Saul to kill women, children, animals, everything, annihilate all the possessions, everything. Don't take anything in to annihilate this place. And Saul didn't obey the voice of the Lord, his God. Instead, he kept the good of the cattle. He blamed. Uh, uh, Samuel said, uh, Saul, you didn't obey God. Oh, yes, I did. Then, well, what's this bleeding in my why, why am I hearing bow, bow, all the cows in the background? They're supposed to be dead, not bowing, a bad. He said, oh, well, uh, I saved those for a sacrifice for God, the best. Don't use religion to cover up your dark heart of rebellion. Don't hide behind the church mask, the Christian mask, and say, oh, the reason why I saved those is because I wanted to make a sacrifice for the Lord. And Samuel said, when you were small in your own eyes, God gave you this kingdom. But when you crossed the line into arrogance and pride, and all you lost your shyness the first night we ordained you. You were hiding behind a crate, behind the stage. You were so shy. And now all of a sudden, you've taken on this kingdom and you've become big in your own eyes like you are something in yourself. I'm telling you right now that God desires obedience rather than sacrifice. It is even as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is rebellion to the Lord. And this day your kingdom will be taken from you. And then God still gave him 25 years after that to get rid of his arrogance and his pride and his demon that he picked up so that he would repent. But Saul never did repent. Listen, here's the thing. We all sin. So don't gauge yourself on how good you are with your work performance because we all make mistakes we're still human here's the difference in David and Saul David sinned but he had a heart after God let me tell you something weevils wobble but they don't fall down babe so let me encourage you in your crazy life in all the things that you do in your life, no matter how crazy your life is, no matter what crazy things you do, no matter what sin you get into, if you will love God with your heart, if you will serve God with your heart, God will honor you, God will forgive you, God will restore you, God's favor will be upon your life. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap. All right, I'm fixing to close with this. I'm fixing to close. Come on, stand up, and I'm going to let the teacher real quick go over this. Um, all right, now, so now Jairus, remember, Jairus is going to, um, uh, um, bringing Jesus to his house to heal his daughter, um, Talitha. Along the way, he gets stopped. Now, he's daughter is on the deathbed any second she's going to die can you imagine when Jesus stopped for the woman with the issue of blood what kind of anxiety was going through Jairus he said wait a minute what are you Jesus you're for your mind you can't stop food with this girl she's crazy anyhow she ain't supposed to be out here anyhow she's in public and then she's unclean so But Jesus still took time. And then ultimately, Jesus gets to Jairus, the good father's house. And immediately there's mourners. And, and in fact, before he got there, he sent word and told, Jesus, uh, told Jairus, said, hey, stop, don't, don't trouble him anymore. Your daughter's dead. And I love what Jesus did. 
Jesus said, Jairus, only believe, babe. Don't give up on me now. Don't quit faithing it out now. Don't quit fighting it out now, babe. Just believe, man. Come on, grab my hand again and pull me because I can't. I, I can't do that for you. you got to do it for yourself. I can only follow what you give me command to do, said Jesus. So I can't go do it on my own. i still got to have a man in the earth that has dominion that can still tell me and release God's kingdom. I'll release the power, but you got to speak the kingdom into existence. you got to walk your kingdom out in existence in earth. I'll back you up, but you got to be the initiator. And so Jesus follows Jairus. Jairus gets the faith. How I many of you know that God, the devil's going to try to shake your faith along the way? He's going to try to get you to quit faithing it out. He's going to try to get you to try to quit fighting it out. But you've got to fight it out, baby. Your daughter's dead. There's no hope, man. Don't trouble God anymore. It's over. Quit. Throw the towel in. You'll never, it it will never work. It's over. And Jairus, when he heard the word of Jesus, he says, no, I'm going to make a decision to still believe God. I'm going to believe Jesus over the world's voices. And so they got to the house and immediately Jesus puts everybody out of the room that she had died in, except for Jairus, his wife, and three disciples, Peter, James, and John. Why did Jesus bring folks in that, that, that he knew that were personal people to him, that had a, 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 a stake? How I many of you know the stakes are high? you got to have a stake in it. The parents had a stake in it. Peter, James, and John were with Jesus. They had a stake and Jesus told them all when he was walking in, he said, Hey, why y'all crying, man? She's just sleeping. Immediately they went from weeping and crying and putting on the morning mask to, to mocking him. Laughing at him. Let me tell you something. There are going to be some people that are going to laugh at you. They're going to mock you. They're going to look crazy at you. One mask they're mourning, they got your back, and they're for you, and they're beside you. And the next minute they've turned you. They've turned their back against you, and now they're trying to stab you. Listen, you got to fight the good fight of faith. you got to keep going forward with your life. So the devil tried to, to cause uh, them to quit in midstream. Then they get there, and Jesus says they're sleeping, and then he starts to, to taunt them. And Jesus put them all out of the house. And they went into the room, and Jesus spoke to that little girl that was 12 years old. He said, little girl, and grabbed her hand and said, arise. And she got up off of that deathbed. In the resurrection of life, Jesus our Lord. Raised her from the dead. Here's what I'm going to say to you today. You might have some demons that you're fighting in your family. Jesus is the answer. Listen, you, you may have some sickness that you can't overcome. Twelve long years, you've spent every, exhausted every physical remedy in the world, and you're still sick. Listen, Jesus is the answer. Listen, your daughter may be dead, but she can be a found. She can be alive. She might be blind, but now she can see in Jesus. Jesus is the answer. Good fathers lay their life down, and they give their kids to Jesus. Give God glory. Praise God. I'm going to hurry up and skim through this part because this is really where we need to be. But the good father, he's a good provider, but that doesn't just mean provision for, of physical things, but a spiritual foundation as well. Amen. He gives of, of himself by giving his time and meeting the emotional needs for uh, security and affirmation. And you can't do that without being there for them and giving them the time. And a good father truly knows what it means to set his children up for success. One of the key ways is by letting them fail, teaching them and being there to teach them how to give up. And these are the gifts that he gives them. A biblical foundation above all. That's why I put that first. 
because they need to know that even in their failure, they need to know about dependency upon God and that you turn to him not just in failures but in successes and you let him be your compass for life. But I call this the gift of failure because a lot of parents think that, you know, we're responsible for giving our kids a safe and comfortable life. No, you're not. God gave you one mandate. He said, train them up in a way that they should go. So when they are old, they will not depart. Give them the biblical foundation. Give them the gift of failure. Allow them to fail in a safe environment because your child's first experience failing should not be in a career. Let them do it in a safe environment because it will teach them responsibility. The earlier, the better. Also, it, you know, help them to face those consequences. You need to be there for them. It's a, it's a disservice to your child to eliminate every struggle because when you eliminate those struggles and you jump in there, they don't, they don't become capable. The, giving them the gift of failure teaches them how to be capable and how to handle the failure themselves. It gives them confidence to feel empowered because if you keep jumping in, then they'll think they can't do it. And you know, sometimes when we're teaching them rules, you gotta, sometimes you gotta help create a little bit of that failure too. Like they won't put on their seatbelt. Sometimes you might have to throw on the brakes in the parking lot, let their head hit the dashboard for a second. You don't want it to be when you're on the interstate and they're not locked in, okay? It will teach them failure. Letting your children fail teaches them resilience, how to stand strong. You don't know what's facing them out there in life. You need to teach them how to stand strong and how to face life. And it all goes back to the first thing, which is giving them a biblical foundation and letting them know not mama, not daddy, not your job, not your finances, not your spouse, but God, Jesus, will be there for you in every situation. Hey, let me pray you out of this place. If you're a first, second, or third time visitor, if you'll take a couple of minutes to be with me and some of our staff in our Welcome Center, we'd love to have you guys. We love all of you. Hey, is God good in this place or what? All right. Hey, are we learning anything in this place? All right. So what's the number one lesson? Jesus, right? We got to give our uh, got to give our kids Jesus. Father, I thank you so much for all of our people. We bless them in the mighty name of Jesus, God, as they go out of this place. Give them safe travel to their homes and their houses. A great week this week in school and in work, God. Meet every need, Lord, of every one of our people. We bless them now in the mighty name of Jesus. Cause your face to shine upon our people in the name of Jesus. Have a great, great, great day and the rest of this week. We love you and we bless you in the name of Jesus.